Hello, everyone. It's Dwight, and what I would like to accomplish today is <clears throat> I'm going to walk you through basically how you move from the conceptual part of um, your database to actually building the database in SQL Server. So as you see on my screen here, I have the uh, SQL Server Management Studio running. Hopefully you've got, gotten this far. If you have not, please email me or message me right away so we can get to this point. And you should have all the attributes and the service for SQL Server running. Uh, and the purpose of this lab, and this is Mod 4 now, is to basically start the construction of your database. So you see here in the Object Explorer, you have, and I'm pretty much going to allow you to use this to build, you know, to, to create your database. Um, I know I've gone through um, particular instructions where you can use SQL query and you can start a query here, but I would suggest using the Object Explorer and you'll see what I mean here. So if you expand the databases, I have the AdventureWorks uh, 2019 database in there, but it's pretty straightforward. Just follow these instructions. You want to right click on database. And, you know, it's highlighted and you get new database and it'll bring up the new database pop up. Um, basically, you really don't need to change a lot. Uh, your server and all that should be your, your laptop, etc. Just provide your database a name and I'm, <clears throat> I'm going to go with the pizza ordering system database. So I'm gonna call my database pizza, pretty boring. Uh, but you see, basically the system will create all the attributes or the objects you need. You just need to provide the name. So there's really no need to go into to anything further. And believe me, most DBAs love this feature in SQL Server. They can create new databases and follow some of the the uh, parts of their, their diagrams to make sure the tables are, are connected and related, et cetera. So once you provide a name, yeah, you pretty much don't need to do anything else, then just click OK here on the bottom, bottom right here. And you see SQL Server and its magic will create your database for. So if you expand that database, you have all your attributes of, of a typical database. Um, you can look in, in these, and we will probably cover some of these throughout the course, but primarily, I do, do want you to understand, essentially, you're going from your diagram, right? Um, and if you've looked into SQL Server, and we, I'll cover some of this a little bit, actually do diagrams uh, in SQL Server, but we don't have any tables. So once you've created your database, you see here, there is a tables folder, and you can expand that, you see your system tables, everything is set up, SQL Server is very good at that, but we need uh, user tables or functional tables for your, your pizza ordering system. So once again, just right click on table, new, and for now, we're just going to create tables. And you should have a good idea of how your, your tables will be connected. Uh, for example, in a pizza ordering system, you have a, a customer ID, uh, so you're probably going, going to have a customer's table and then you have an order ID. So you probably have an orders table. Those two will probably be the most needed in this type of scenario, but you may have a pizza table, which is which includes ingredients, but that, because what I'm gonna ask you to do is to create at least three tables to you know pretty much construct your system around. So anyway, so new table, and it brings up the, the table creation GUI and this is, this is <clears throat> essentially a very, very easy way um, to begin your, your table creation process. So you notice that I did not, I was not prompted for a name, but don't worry about that. We'll get to that um, as we begin to build a table. So this table, I'm gonna make it pretty simple. We're gonna call this our customer's table eventually. Yeah, and like I said, don't worry about the name of it. So we have, we're gonna do first name for our first column or our first, uh, essentially our first attribute within the entity. Now you, you got the, the verbiage. Um, and some of the naming conventions for your, your in SQL Server, it's pretty, you know, pretty straightforward. Oh, whoops, I hit, 
um, inadvertently hit the enter. So I'm just going to do first name. And you need to select the, the type of data type. We talked about data types. Um, now, with SQL Server, in, in char, well, probably that's the default, but most, more, more than likely, will have more than 10 characters. So I would suggest just going to the NVAR char 50, right? Um, allow nulls. Basically, this is a way you can have the nulls essentially as, a, as, the, um, as the entity is built, uh, you probably will have to deal with nulls, but I would default to what, what allow nulls. The thing here, <clears throat> if this is going to be our customer's table, essentially you should start with the key or the index. Um, so I'm gonna kind of change this. I'm gonna go back to customer, uh, call the first column or first field customer ID. And instead of um, in bar char, and generally <clears throat> you want this just to be an integer, a number from a very basic integer. So you can select integer and you, you cannot allow nulls in your primary key. And if you right click on the name, you can set the primary key right away. And we'll talk about primary keys and relationships and all that in another video, but for now, when we begin to talk about data, just set it as your primary key and you see there's this little gold key that comes in um, to that particular field, all right? All right, then we can go to our next column and call it first name. Okay, and this is going to be in bar chart 50. All right, and not nulls. And we're gonna allow nulls last name. And you can change these as we go, but for now, I, I want you to, to at least create, you know, three tables, three fields, um, and begin to think about how you would expand that to make sure you, you can accommodate the um, all of the information. And I'm just going to call this last one just address. And you have to be careful with something like this. Uh, you know, the address is going to be long. You see that you can actually change the value of 50 uh, within your data type. I'm going to do 125, and it will allow you to do that. Okay, so I'm just going to go with those three fields in our in our our first table. And I'm move away. So, <clears throat> so now that you have your your first table, you're probably thinking, okay, so how do I save this? Um, so if you right click on the tab at the very top. There's a save table one. Um, and basically this is where you, you can, you get the opportunity to name the table. So I'm gonna call this customers, okay. And then just click okay. Now uh, you're thinking, well, I don't see that table here yet. So if you right click on the tables and click the refresh, and don't worry about the DBO, that stands for database object. The system ignores that when you're querying, uh, you're gonna query the customer's table, but this is how it organizes. So I would keep the DBO there. And if you expand the table and look at your keys, you'll see that you have a customer, a primary key for customers. And like I said, once again, we'll talk about, or we'll discuss essentially what that means. So now, so now you've just created your first table and I would go go ahead. I'm not gonna do that because I, I do want these, these videos to be pretty short, but once again, right click new table. So if you wanna check this table, just open up a new query. Hopefully my system will work. It takes a little bit of time. You see you have that table creation and we are gonna talk about um, going into queries a little bit more, but I'm, I'm just gonna do a simple select, select star, which is your wildcard for all fields from, and then we know our table is customers, right? And you see uh, SQL Server has an IntelliSense uh, feature where, where it will essentially let you know all the tables that are available. And up here in your, you know, your toolbar here or your, your area where all the functions are, you have an execute. 
So this is where you can execute. Uh, with SQL Server, you don't necessarily need to add a semicolon, but if you have several um, queries within one working area, area, you want to make sure the semicolon is there. So you execute, and you see that it returns all of our fields. We have no data yet. And that's what I want for this. So I would want you to do a screenshot of this table. We don't need data right now. We're gonna do data in, in the next module. Um, but, okay, so once again, <clears throat> the whole purpose of this lab is to create at least three tables of what you need for your, your database system or your whatever functions, your function you've had, to, you have decided to, uh, to select and mine is pizza, so I have customers. I'm probably going to have orders because, you know, the customers, customer will call in. And, and that reminds me. Now, <clears throat> if you need to alter the table, you said to yourself, well, uh, maybe I should add phone number. I need to, to tie that to a customer. You can come back to this, this uh, working area here for tables, and you can add additional fields. So phone number. Be another field, and, and just to be consistent, and it really doesn't matter at this point. I'm just going to make it a bar chart 50. Phone numbers aren't 50. Uh, if you want to scale it down to save resources to 10, you can do that. And then all you need to do is here's right click on that tab and save customers. So now you have that additional field in there, etc. So if I run that query again. And I know I'm going a little fast. What if I just run this query again? You see that phone number field is there. All right, so that's a simple rundown of what I'm looking for as far as this first lab. Uh, once again, and I, I will have descriptions, descriptions in there when you get to that area, um, is to create at least three, three tables. Uh, this does not have to be uh, comprehensive or complicated. I just want you to get an idea of how SQL Server works and how it helps you to understand your database structure. Um, for those of you using Mac, as you know, SQL Server is a Windows product. I'm hoping that you, you will use SQL Develop on, on the Oracle side. And to reiterate, make sure you contact me because I need to add you to the cloud instance so that you can access the cloud database and build your, <coughs> build your, your your attributes and entities or your tables, uh, tables and fields. And please contact me if you have any questions about any of this. But, uh, there you go. This, hopefully this is not gonna be too frustrating and too difficult. Uh, I, I will defi definitely run some, um, yeah, I'll call them office hours where, where you know, we'll meet on Zoom and we can walk through some things if you're having difficulties. All right, there you go, lab within module four. Thank you.